What's up, everybody? Welcome to something that I have the word. I hope you're ready to get your Minotaur on. I am. Let's get the chat all closed out. Hope you have your little horns on. <laughs> I do. They're impacting my, my ability. Ooh, Dragon Lord Ojitai. Okay, let me get behind that. As far as our... Yes, we'll keep. Got Badlands, little Soul Ring action. Got the uh, get the War Caller and Blightning, Victimize, Dolman Gate. That way we can start swinging in, not worry about that combat damage. Yes, we'll keep on this one. Sounds like a plan. Only thing that make this hand better is if we were uh, on the play, but we're on the draw, so I'll definitely take that. Hopefully our opponent doesn't have to mulligan past five. Hopefully they can find what they need, but yes, yeah, so let's start off from the head. We're playing the head the worthy. Yes, first strike. Other Minotaur creatures you control have first strike. Then as long as you uh, have one or fewer cards in your hand, Minotaurs you control get plus two, plus zero. Uh, whenever the head deals combat damage to a player, each player discards a card. Uh, yeah, there we go. Each player discards a card. So as far as this deck goes, we're running some Hellbent stuff. We're running some um, a few Madness stuff to take advantage of that Hellbent. But one of the main things that we're doing... Ooh, Strip mine. Uh, one of the main things we're doing is we're just looking to get in spots where we can just get a bunch of Minotaurs out there, start swinging in. And I'll cover uh, Dragon Lord Ojitai in just a second. Okay, let's go ahead and go Badlands. Is that what we lead off with? Let's go ahead and, yeah, let's go Badlands. Let's go Soul Ring. And then let's lead off with the uh, Dolmen Gate. Let's see if our opponent wants to uh, strip mine our, our Badlands. If they want to, sure, go for it. Get down the Dolmen Gate. The next turn we're looking at the, getting down the Bloodfell Caves, and then we still have Lightning and the Victimize if we can get a few more creatures off the uh, key to the city. So get that down. Playing against Dragon Lord Ojitai. It has Hexproof as long as it's untapped, and then whenever Dragon Lord Ojitai deals combat damage to your player, look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of them in your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So, pretty fun. This is actually, uh, I'm not a huge blue white person, but uh, Dragon Lord Oj Ojitai was uh, one of my. Uh, one of the, one of the, my favorite command not commanders but favorite yeah I guess technically commander but one of my favorite dragons out of the set it just it was just a really cool design that it has hexproof long as untapped so if you just it just sits there it's okay and once it finally does swing in you get that little uh, kind of little brainstorm action uh, while not putting cards back we still get to look at the top three so I felt it was a uh, a well designed magic card and it, it kind of just had me like even though I don't play blue white I'm just kind of like yeah that's pretty cool. Okay, see if our opponent goes, nope, not going for the straight line. Uh, let's go ahead and get the Bloodfell Caves down. So, we're looking at, we're going to gain that one life. Um, we can tap, we can go for the Blood Rage Brawler. Enters the battlefield, we're going to have to discard a card. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and go for that. I mean, it's better than what, uh, pretty much, it's all kind of kind of all we can get going on right now. I'd, I'd rather get a Minotaur going, too. So, let's tap for two, and then we can follow up in the head next turn. And we're going to have to discard a card. I think on this one, um, our best bet... If we're going to keep our opponent down, we can actually fire Blightning at our opponent. They're going to have to discard two cards. Let's go ahead and chunk. Um, we could go Victimize on Warcaller. Let's go ahead and go Key to the City right now. We're not in a spot where we absolutely need the Key to the City. Uh, next turn, we're looking at getting down the Heb the Worthy. We can swing in for four. Somehow, if we get into spots where we can go Hellbent, then that'll be a nice little added bonus. But yeah, the deck's been a lot of fun so far. If you didn't see the deck tech, mainly what we're doing is we've got Minotaur Tribal in here, we've got Discard Outlets, we've got Reanimator. Uh, not really super heavy on Reanimator. And then we also have some painful discard style stuff. So we've got like Liliana's Caress, we've got Megrim in here, and we're also running Rakdos to Return, which is a uh, really fun, <laughs> it's always just a fun finisher, man. I love that card. Especially at this point in the game, you know, we can cast, uh, we can actually, if we had Rakdos Return, we can cast it for two. And then blast our opponent away from one card. So, uh, let's see what we draw for the turn. Draw is Lightning Greaves. That is perfect. I wish we had the land drop, though. Uh, do we want to go for Neheb or Lightning Greaves? Okay, one, two, three. So, if we get down to Heb, it's going to. Other Minotaurs you control have first strike, which is not really going to matter. We can't empty anything else out of the hand. Now, if we go Blightning, we can discard two. No, let's go ahead and go Neheb. Let's get down to Heb. That way, next turn, we can lead off with Lightning Greaves. So, we're looking at. Uh, especially where our opponents. You know, just have two mana up. Tapping for two right there. If they got a counter spell, they've got it. All right, they don't. Or potentially they don't. Uh, let's go and swing in for four. Does that first strike now? Coming in hot. It's going to put our opponent down to twenty six. And the next turn, we kind of re rack on what's going on. So we've got lightning grease. We can get that down. We definitely want to protect the head. That way we can start swinging in and get our get our opponent to basically start discarding card. Uh, they're running Dragon Lord Ojitai, so their main thing is they're going to be looking to get a lot of cards in their hand, just digging into their deck. So with playing the Heb, you can definitely go just wide with a bunch of beast sticks with uh, Minotaur Tribal. But there's also like certain games that you'll play where it's just keeping your cards out of your opponent's hand. We keep swinging with the Heb. They're getting rid of cards that they don't want to get rid of, and they're just keeping their hand count low. And unfortunately, it looks like our opponent uh, might be a little mana screwed. Hopefully, they can find a, a, a you know, we are a little technically mana screwed, too. We've only got two lands and a uh, soul ring over there. So, But I do appreciate our opponent not blowing up our uh, Badlands or the 
the caves with that strip mine. And they're tapping for four man. Let's see what they're going for. But yeah, the deck's a lot of fun. I it's uh, I love building tribal stuff, man. Tri tribe tribe magic stuff. It's just I, f I feel like I'm a little kid again in magic. That that was just such a when you first get into magic, such an innocent experience. It's always fun. See if we hit the land drop for the turn. See what we draw. Come on, come on to him. Temple of Malice. I'll take that. Uh, let's go and get the temple down. Let's get the scry up and running, or scurry, according to my Theros previous opponent. Uh, inspired, whenever you becomes up tapping, you may pay two if you do create a token that's a copy of another creature, except it's an enchantment in addition to gains haste, exile it. Do we want that right now? We can definitely get it down next turn, and actually throw the uh, lightning grease on it. Looking at discarding a few cards. Looking at one, two, three, four, five. Uh, we're gonna have the War Caller. We can lead off with that. Yeah, let's go and put that on the bottom. I can see it's getting in spots where we're just going to go for War Caller next turn anyway. So, yeah, let's go and put that on the bottom. Not too thrilled with that. Uh, let's go and get the Lightning Grease down. We're looking at 1-2. Let's go and stick the Lightning Grease on the head. Anything else we're going to do for two mana? No, we don't have enough. Okay, we're going to go and swing in hot. That's going to be six coming across. Put them down to 20. That's going to be two total commander damage. And we're going to have to chunk a card into the graveyard. Uh, let's go and chunk Victimize right now. We're in a spot to where it's just not really... Uh, we don't have it online right now. We don't really have any creature cards in the graveyard either. And we're looking at going for War, war Caller next turn. That way we'll get the... Uh, hopefully if we get the land drop next turn, uh, we can play the land drop, uh, cast the War Caller, get that nice little haste added bonus swinging in, that plus two for all of our creatures. Yeah, the War Caller is really good in this deck. You know, it gives all of our Minotaurs haste. But whenever it attacks, you get that plus two bonus. So right now we're looking at swinging in for six. If we get down the War Caller, stick the Lightning... Well, it's going to have uh, haste anyway, so we can just swing in. So we're looking at uh, 6, 8 coming across, then 10, 12, and we're going to have 14 once we get that nice little added bonus. And the um, we'll have an active Neheb, too, with the extra plus 2, plus 2. I mean, the extra plus 2, plus 0. So really good card in the deck. Uh, definitely, there's been times where it, it seems like an, pretty expensive for like a, a, a Magic Lord, but um, giving our creatures haste and that plus 2 bonus is really solid, especially if you can come down and uh, swing in the, the turn it comes in, plus the artwork on it, man. <laughs> I don't know, it looks very Lorewind to me, and uh, I don't know, I just really like the uh, the Minotaur art on that one. But Neheb, man, look at the little fire stick over that fire javelin. Every time I re record it with Neheb, it makes me feel like uh, like a teacher when he was younger got onto him a lot for running with scissors. He just seems like a student that would run with scissors a lot if his, uh, one of his weapons was a fire stick, so... I don't know why I just kept thinking about that. Okay, so our opponent's in the think tank right now. Um, looks like they did chunk a... Ooh, Winter Orb. Ooh. God, that's in the graveyard. Oh, man. <laughs> anyway, uh, so our opponent can't go for a Dragon Lord Ojitai right now. We are looking at three from the Thran Dynamo, and then white and blue off the island in the plains. Uh, that's going to leave two mana up for them to cast something. So we'll see what they're going to go for. I'm not entirely sure what they're uh, going into the think tank right now, but... Uh, and actually, I don't know if they're a wave computer. Let me see. Oh, never mind. There they go. And sometimes uh, people have to step away from the computer and don't say anything sometimes. So we're just checking. Might be seeing a Dragonlord Ojitai coming down right now. Possibly. Because that'll be a nice little 5-4. But between the bonus between the War Caller and once we have active in the head with one card in hand, hopefully we'll be able to kind of get around that uh, first strike swinging in. So that'll be a nice little bonus. But major props to our opponent. I love, you know... We don't have any basics out here, but I love the old school basics, and especially Mirage. Mir Mirage was the first stuff that I got into, but uh, all the old school basics like on, Ma on Magic Online look so good. And this planes right here, oh, I love the white and black on it, the contrast, beautiful. Old school, I, I don't know what it is, you know, there's some new Magic uh, land cards, the art is just spectacular. Council's Judgment, okay. Let's see if they're going to go for on this one. Let's go and get this uh, chat just... Shrunk down a little bit, and then what do they vote for? Clicks for Soul Ring. Um, yeah, sure, fair enough. Okay, get rid of Soul Ring. So that's going to keep about, keep us off the War Caller, but we still have Blightning to follow up with, uh, depending if they have any sort of counter spell. So we can deal three damage up top. They're going to discard two cards, which is definitely going to turn on the uh, turn on the Worthy. So that'll be nice. Transmute, Muddle the Mixture. Uh, let's see what they're going to search for. With Muddle the Mixture, it's Transmute for three. Uh, they're going to be able to search their library for a card with um, the same converted mana cost as this. So basically, they're going to be able to... Ooh, Cyclonic Rift. Okay. Yes. But to say, they can search for a card that costs two, or if you have a nice little overloaded Cyclonic Rift. All right, so it's going to pop that up so we don't forget about it. I, I doubt we would forget about it, but uh, here we are. Well, actually, we have Blightning, so we can just discard it out of their hand, so that'll be good. 
I'll take that. Yeah, let's go ahead and fire the Blightning off. Uh, we're looking at it's coming in hot. It's going to be three damage up top. And all they have is strip mine, so they're not going to be able to get around this one. So it's going to be three damage. They're going to have to discard two cards, which is going to be the Cyclonic Rift and whatever card they have in their hand. Unfortunately, that wasn't a land we drew for the turn, so we're not going to have an active Neheb. Thanks, man. Technically not over yet, but uh, our opponent may want to scoop it up. But uh, yeah, so we got rid of the two cards in the hand, and the other card was a Trophy Mage. Okay, so we're going to swing in hot for six. That's going to be put them down to 11. That's going to be four more commander damage. And then, it, yeah, that's going to be four commander damage from the Heb. Yeah, and unfortunately, if we had the, uh, could have got the, uh, that would have been a nice little added bonus if our soul ring didn't get blown up with Council's Judgment. But it did. <laughs> that happened. That, that's part of magic. All right, let's see what our opponent said. Okay, so we're going to get that and have the worthy trigger. Let's go ahead and chunk the, I guess. So we're looking at from under the floorboards. We could actually hold on to it and cast it next turn to get a zombie. Or if we go land, land, we'll get into War Caller. Um, let's go ahead and go. Let's chunk the War Caller into the graveyard. I'm okay with that. Um, that way we can at least get a zombie out of the value. And then next turn, hopefully we can be online with Neheb. And uh, we'll keep that online. And then we'll have the 4-2 uh, first strike. And then we'll have a little 6-3 from the... Uh, the uh, Blood Rage Brawler over there. See what they said. Go for it, man. We'll see exactly what happens. So, with the Cyclonic Rift in the graveyard, they're basically in top deck mode. Uh, we're not sure what they drew, but um, another good play would be Dragonlord Ojutai getting it down as a nice little blocker. So if they go for that, I feel a little bit better. But they're tapping for, it looks like, six mana. So, let's see if they're going for... If we don't hit the land drop next turn, we can go for a, from under the floorboards for one zombie token. It's not the best, but we're just getting a little bit of value out of something because uh, our soul ring did get blown up, so unfortunately that did happen. And the way they're retapping, this might be Dragon Lord. Oh, excuse me, Supreme Verdict. Or you can top deck a Supreme Verdict. Very nice, man. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we got a. Okay, yeah, this is the we, gloves are off right now. The gloves have completely come off. All right, so we got a strip mine uh, followed up with uh, finally activated that strip mine. Let's see, what do we draw for the turn? Hopefully, hit the land drop. Uh, we're looking at Neheb. We draw uh, Tathgarth. Um, let's go ahead and pass the turn. All right, so we're looking at two. We've got two lands in hand. Our opponent can definitely get down Dragonlord Ojutai and start swinging in from there. So, we're going to have to rally. <laughs> Hopefully we can get around this. We just need to run our runner, runner lands on this one. Unfortunately, we're not running a whole lot of uh, card draw in here just because we're trying to get, get an active Neheb. Um, stuff that would help us get out of this if we go Hellbent. Um, we get a discard outlet. We can chunk those cards in the graveyard. Uh, other than that, we're looking at... Um, we have a couple of the untapped creatures. So we have no cards in hand. We can draw a few cards. All right. We're still looking at two mana, so everything costs three or more, so we're not going to be able to cast that. Uh, Neheb is looking at five mana since it did get destroyed. And then hopefully uh, we can kind of rally from here. But, uh, yeah, talk about nice uh, nice little top deck from our opponent, man. Shout out to him. Yeah, that, that's um, – actually, excuse me one second. You know, like, I, I don't get mad about top decks. That's part of the game. That's what, ma that's what keeps magic exciting to me. Um, I played at a tournament one time where um, – it was a modern tournament, and I, I top decked the card that I needed. And it, it wasn't like I top decked the card that I needed on turn two. I mean, we'd gone to like turn 10 or something like that. So I drew the card that I needed. I was playing a combo deck. I combo off, and my opponent was really salty towards me. And he was just like, good draw. And it, he basically just kind of devalued the entire game that we just played by saying, like, you just got luck. You just won because you top decked that card, which fundamentally, like, you know, there's so many other variables that got us to this point in the game to where I was like, able to combo off. But anyway, you know. If an opponent top decks against you, man, cool. <laughs> awesome, man. It's just that, that you're just along for the ride. It's always fun. Okay, let's see what we draw. Draw Dark Deal. Okay, that is something. So if we hit the land drop, we're looking at draw Dark Deal. We're going to discard our hand and then draw that many cards minus one. That'll be a good way for us to kind of refuel our hand. But it looks like our opponent might steal this one away. But, yeah. But, yeah, top decks and magic, man. It's, it's always, uh, you, can, you know... There's always going to be that part of you that's a little bit salty, where you're just kind of like, all right. But at the same time, he tutored up Cyclonic Rift, and we had Blightning in our opening hand, and so we got to take care of the Cyclonic Rift, so it is what it is. Just sometimes the magic gods, they're, they're funny. They're fickle with who they choose to, to do stuff for, so <laughs> it's always fun. And our opponent does have Standstill out there, so whenever we cast a, uh, cast a spell, they're going to draw three cards, so that's going to be uh, a little hard for us. Uh, let's get the Mountain down. So we're looking at... 
Dark Deal. This is kind of really our only way out of this one. We could get into spots where we go Megrim. Um, get that down. And then, no, look, we're looking at getting a fresh grip of three. Yeah, discard it hard. We're going to be drawing two cards off this one. But everything else, we're just going to have to go land, land, even get into five mana. And by that time, we're already going to be swinging in and looking at, like, uh, three combat steps. So... I guess right now, Dark Deal is kind of like our only really, if we're playing to our outs, which is, I'm not entirely sure what our outs are, uh, this is kind of our best option, because just following up with Megrim, and then following up with From Under the Floorboards, or um, Tath, Tengarth, or whatever, is not really going to be our best bet. So let's see if our opponent does have a counter spell. Um, this is basically just kind of digging for something. We're going to end up with two cards in the hand, and maybe get into spots where we can get in the head with the uh, Lightning Grease on there. Everything, everything else is just not the uh, not the best. So if they got a counter spell, so be it. But they did crack the uh, the standstill and get those land cards over there. But yeah, this is uh, yeah, it's it's always fun getting a nice little top deck. Huh? Props to our opponents. Excuse me, one sec. My phone's uh, there. We go. Okay, so we've got disenchant on the dolmen gate. Fair enough. And they're gonna add that blue mana to their mana pool. We're gonna get dark deal up and running, which is not the end of the world. You know, uh, we'll definitely hold on to lightning greaves. Okay, Madness Cost, we do draw a Pluto Delta, and we get into Gore Horn Minotaur, so which is, you know, runner land, getting into that, not too bad. Not going to be able to cast that. Nope, don't have enough mana, buddy. That goes in the graveyard, and then let's see, anything else. They're going to have Dragon Lord swinging in for 5, that's going to put us down to 21, that's going to be 10 commander damage. So we can get Pluto Delta, uh, throwing the Lightning Grease on the head. That, that assumes our opponent doesn't have a counter spell. Let's see what they did discard. We're looking at Tezzeret, sort of uh, Vengeance, we got the Shackles. And Pluto Delta. So, you know, in a world where we just draw our fifth land, excuse me, actually, sorry about that. In a world where we draw our fifth land, and then we can uh, get down the head, get the lightning grease on there, we might be able to close it out, but we'll see. But yeah, so, yeah, that what a, yeah, it's just one of those, just like, um, I've played against a few salty people in Magic, in, in, especially online, you know. For some reason, when you play online, it feels like some people just feel like, uh, you're just not deserving of a win. So I've never understood that mentality. So I remember I played against somebody on the Star City, Star City Game Tour, and uh, they were really salty about me winning. And I just remember thinking, like, <laughs> like, why do you deserve this win that much more than I deserve? You know, we sat down to play. Look at that card art, man. Target player disc reels in hand, discard all non-lane cards. <laughs> that is, uh, that looks like, uh, <laughs> that looks like Morty for Rick and Morty a little bit. I mean, well, obviously the hole in his head, but that's pretty gruesome for uh, <laughs> for magic art. It's funny whenever you see cards for the first time, and it's been around forever, but yeah, that's some wild card art right there. Okay, so our front is getting in for... <laughs> I don't know, that's just really, uh, really bizarre. Like, hey, Mom, can I play Magic? Here's one of the cards that's in there. <laughs> a dude with a hole in his head. <laughs> and needles in his neck. Okay, so, uh, so we've got Pluto Delta. Let's get that down. We're uh, hoping to get another land. That's what we're going for. So if you oh, we do. Okay, let's get the Pluto Delta down. Uh, we're, we're getting somewhere. Runner, runner, land. Uh, anything else we need to do for the turn? But I guess we can just go ahead and crack it if you want to. No, we'll go and leave it up. Um... Yeah, we're just going to crack it because I'll get chatty and forget about it. So let's go to crack the Polluted Delta. Uh, let's go and grab a Blood Crit. Put it in play tap. No, not going to pay two life. And then we're going to go and pass the turn. All right, so next turn, we're looking at getting down the head for five mana. Throw the Lightning Greaves on there. We're going to definitely be Hellbent, which is going to end up with a 4-2 swinging in. Uh, put our opponent down to seven. Hopefully, because we're also looking at a three-turn clock with their Dragon Lord Ojitai swinging in, dealing combat damage. So... And with the head being hellbent, he's going to get that plus two, plus zero, and uh, he'll be able to fire stick Dragon Lord out of the air. So, but either way, I'm going to go and post this video up. It's kind of been a fun little commentary video. Yeah, I like to, um, you know, I'll post my wins or losses. You know, if it looks like we almost closed it out and our opponent gets an awesome top deck and it goes from there, fair enough. Okay, we've got Detention Sphere coming down. Let's see if they. Uh, yep, they're going to go for Lighting Grease. Let's see if they. Non land permanent. Yeah, I'll see if maybe they're going to name Dragon Lord Ojitai. That would have been nice. But we're still going to play this one out. Okay, so they take our Lightning Grease. Poor little Neheb. He's not going to be able to do that. All right, swinging so in for five. They're going to get that up and running. Then we can still just follow up with Neheb, see what happens. So we're looking at a two-turn clock from Ojitai. But yeah, on my channel, I, I like to, uh, you know, win or lose. If it's a good game of Magic, if it was fun, entertaining Magic match, I like to post it up. So I'm not up here to just post only my wins, so pretty fun. Let's get the Swamp down, see what we draw for the turn. 
Draw another swamp. Let's go and get the swamp down. Let's, hey, we've got it. We've got to go to heaven. <laughs> Let's go, buddy. You are our last. Hey, if you are the worthy, if you're worthy of this cause, you're our last hope, man. Let's get you down. I don't know what we could draw to. Because we're looking at 4 8. Oh, if they got a counter spell, they've got this one. We'll still stick it out, though. We already, we've gone this far. Why not? Fair enough. Not going to pay for condescend. Uh, I'm not sure what we'll draw, but. We'll stick it out. Yeah, so we've got Dragon Lord Ojutai swinging in. That's going to be 20 commander damage the following turn. Um, I'm like 99.9% .9 sure there's no card that we could draw next turn that's going to close us out of this one, especially with Dragon Lord Ojutai um, having that hex proof. But we'll play it out. We'll see. Crazier things have happened. But yeah, this has been a uh, nice little match of magic. So I'll always remember the uh, top deck Supreme Verdict. Very nice. Props to our opponent. All right, so we get it for five. That's going to put us down to 10, 20 commander damage. And they're going to get the uh, the nice little uh, brainstorm action coming in, too. Oh, and also our opponent does have Manamo, so they can swing in for five, untap target legendary permanent, and then still keep that active hexproof, so that'll be good for us. Okay, deals with that five combat damage. But yeah, if you're, if you're looking to play online, uh, get you some nice little old-school basics. Um, some good sets to start off with are um, Masquerades. We've got Onslaught. Uh, Mirage has some really good uh, lands in there, too. See, we draw that gets us out of the game. Fiery Temper. That is not going to get it done. Yeah, and then with Manamo out there, even if we did have a kill spell, they could just untap it in response. So, good game, man. All right, guys. We're going to go and scoop this one up. If you enjoyed it, well, they're going to get it next turn, so we'll save them a combat step. All right, guys. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Thanks, man.